I just wanted to make this video because I think somebody might get something from it. Uh, um, 2000 and maybe like 13, 13, 14, somewhere in there, somewhere in there. I've, I've had, an, had an idea for a book about the tooth fairy. Not because I had any kind of like fascination with the tooth fairy, but I just thought, you know, there's so many questions that children have about the tooth fairy and who the tooth fairy is and what the tooth fairy does and all of those kinds of things. So I've said since those that many years ago that I was going to do a book about the tooth fairy. I said, I'm going to write a book about the tooth fairy one day. I said that. Um, and, you know, I've jotted ideas here and there, but it wasn't up until like within the past year that I got really serious about, okay, Travis, it's time to get on this book. You know, Color Wheel Kids came out in 2017. Always Just Be You came out in 2019. And, you know, they were two years apart. And so now it's 2021. And if I was keeping up with that trend, I would technically be putting a book out this year. As of right now, I don't foresee myself putting this book out this year. I'm, I'm, it'll probably be like spring, I'm thinking. But these two books were not challenges for me. And I am conscious of that. The first book was just, let me just see if I can do it. You know, sometimes you just want to know, can can I do this? Let me just try to do it. So that's what the Color Wheel Kids was. It was a, let me just see if I can do it. And I did it. And then this was, okay, let's see if I can take things just a little bit further with my illustrations. So the Color Wheel Kids, the illustrations are very basic. And as an artist, I am well aware of the effort that I put in for my first book. I am the kind of artist that I don't really like looking at my old stuff. And when I look at my old stuff, I'm like, Ugh. so just honestly speaking, when I look at these first two books that I did, I'm not happy with them. Because if I think back to where I was mentally at that time, I didn't put forth the amount of effort I should have to make it be the best that it could be. And that's just something, that's just a lesson for myself. You know what I mean? So I knew that, and that's illustrations and, you know, overall story as well. So I knew that when it came to my next book, I had to step up my game. I, that is, I just did not have an option. I could not put out another one of these and be happy with myself as an author or happy with myself as an illustrator. And being DIY on top of, Everything else makes things a lot more difficult because I know that I've been blessed with a lot of gifts and I'm trying to tap into all of them. Like I got something really, really, really special to let y'all know about really, really soon that I can't wait for y'all to get your hands on if you're interested in purchasing it. But that's another video at another time. But I'm just always trying to tap into those different parts of my creativity. And so my book about the tooth fairy is my first story, my first full story, beginning, middle, end, story arc, everything in a picture book format. Now, it's been a struggle. It has been a struggle writing this book. Um, when you look at industry standards, which I'm not really trying to fit into anybody's box, but I necessarily don't want to, you know, um, shut myself out. When you look at industry standards, it says, you know, children's books should be no more than a thousand words. Well, I told you all a long time ago, I think I may have said it in the very first video I ever did about writing a book. When I thought about my idea for the Tooth Fairy book, it was on a movie scale. <laughs> OK, like huge ideas and trying to compact that all into a. A thousand word story, I was like, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can do that. And at some point this year, I was like, you know what, Travis, just write what's on your heart, what's on your mind for the story. Just write it. You know, you can always go back and edit it, change it, all of that kind of stuff. You can always do that. Just just write it, though. But there's always been this voice of self-doubt just kind of whispering in my ear. And I think I struggle with that just as an artist in general. I've spoken to you all before about 
and it may be an artist thing, but I've spoken to y'all about, you know, you I'm, would make art and it's not received at all. You know, just transparent, being transparent, being an illustrator has been the most lucrative art related thing I have ever done in my entire life. I used to paint all the time, but no one was interested in my paintings. You know, no one wanted to, for the, I shouldn't say no one, most people <laughs> were not interested in my paintings. Most of my paintings that I did that I was just so happy about, so excited to do are still hanging in my house because nobody want, wanted to buy them then, you know, and, and clearly now because they're still here. <laughs> And I've always struggled with that. Like, maybe art isn't for me. Maybe it's not for me, you know. But on the other side, I'm like, God put something in you. Maybe it's not for the masses. Maybe it's just for you to be able to express yourself. And I got to always remember that if I can touch one person, that might be all I needed to do. And so that has been the, the, the fuel for me to just take another step, take another step, take another step. So I gave up painting. Well, I shouldn't say gave up. I kind of just stopped painting because the last painting I did, <laughs> it's sitting right there. And, um, you know, it, it just is what it is. You know, I was comparing myself to other artists who make paintings that are nowhere near as good as mine. And, and that is just honestly speaking. And they're just selling, selling, selling. But, you know, art is in the eye of the beholder. And I always have to remind myself of that. So I said, you know what? Hey, illustrating is bringing in money you keep going down that road but you don't want to always work for somebody else you want to do some stuff for yourself like i want to be able to leave the legacy behind i've always talked about plant the seeds so the future generations can enjoy the trees that's really what it's all about i have to continue planting small seeds so that my children their children have many generations come until jesus comes back get to enjoy, you know, the fruits of my labor. And that is why this book is so, I feel like maybe that, that might be why this book has been such a, a hard thing to do. And I guess this is really like a diary post at this point. <laughs> um, You know, I'm not even going to go as far as being like, oh, the enemy has been attacking me. I'm not even going to, you know, take it that way. I'm just going to say it has been hard writing this book, y'all. It has been so hard. So, so hard. The, the the final, not the final, like when I finally got the whole thing written out, it was like 2,200 words. Like it was double <laughs> the length of a, a what a children's book is supposed to be. A children, a traditional children's picture book. More pages, more, more words. I'm just like, oh my gosh. But I have to say, you know, this is self-publishing. You're not trying to find an agent. You're not trying to find a publisher. I'm doing it all myself. So bump those industry standards. Who cares? And, um, you know, with going back to work next week, I've just been kind of pushing myself like, OK, Travis, you, you got to get this done. We, we want to shoot for spring. I'm, I'm probably not going to distribute this book to um, like retailers like Walmart, Target, all that kind of stuff, because I have a clear vision about what I want this book to look like, what I want the book to feel like when somebody holds it. And just honestly speaking, Ingram Spark cannot offer me that. You know, that's just where, where I'm at right now with it. Like I have a clear vision about what I want this book to look like when a child is holding it and what, the, what I want the pages to feel like. And Ingram Spark cannot give that to me, nor can any other um, self-publishing company. So I'm going to be doing offset printing, which means... Um, more than likely in China, they're going to print a whole bunch of copies off for me and I'm going to distribute it myself. But today was a major step for me because a couple of days ago, I was like, I need an editor. This story is long. It's a lot. I, I don't know if this even makes sense. You know, sometimes you just need somebody else's eyes to look at it. And this was not a story that I wanted to just send out for free to people to be like, hey, can you look over this and tell me? Like, I was like, I need a professional to look over it and tell me, does this make sense? So I found a, uh, a company called Paper True that reviews papers and stories and all of that kind of stuff. And they, you know, can edit it and give you feedback and all that kind of stuff. So I paid them 
to look at my story and I got it back like 15 minutes ago and I looked over it and y'all, I could cry. Not because they said, oh, this is a perfect story. You're going to be a New York Times bestselling author. They, they didn't say all of that. It was just the fact that they said, you got something good here and you don't have a whole lot of issues with it. It makes sense. Here are some minor things you could change to make it make more sense. And that's all I needed. I needed somebody to tell me that the story made sense from start to finish, that nothing was kind of like unneeded. And that's pretty much all that they gave me suggestions of change this word to this. Maybe use this word instead of this word because using this word too much. Because, you know, I can I only got so many words I can think of. Like one of the, th the issues about writing a story is when characters have dialogue, <laughs> the whole such and such say it. Such and such said, such and such said, such and such exclaimed, such and such yelled, such and such shouted, all of those words. Just trying to find something different so you're not saying the same thing over and over again is difficult. And they went in and they was like, maybe you can use this word instead of this word. I probably should have just went to a thesaurus. But, you know, they gave me some words to use as well as some um, suggestions on some other little things to clean up. But they did not tear it apart like I thought they might. Like I was fully prepared to get this document back and see just red, 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 red Kool-Aid man all over the place. That's what I was expecting. And that's not what it was. So this is like reignited the fire in me to like keep going and keep pressing forward because I had gotten to the place, y'all. I, I sat down um, a couple of days ago. And I said, Travis, you have got to condense this story. You have got to condense the story. The story is too long. I know it's too long. Um, so by that time, but the, when I started, the story had like 2,100 words or something like that. And I was able to cut like 500 words out the story. And I was like, dang, I had 500 words that I didn't need? It's crazy. Um, so it's not going to fit the industry standard of having uh, a thousand words. It's going to be a book that either an older child can read or, you know, you will read to a child. But to me, it, it's still I, in my spirit. I still feel like there's going to be more for this book, like more will come from this book outside of just the book itself. But I just wanted to just. Did I just say just twice? I just wanted to just for what? I don't know. I wanted to encourage anybody who has an idea, go for it. You know, press forward towards your dreams and your aspirations and your goals. Go forward. You know, Walt Disney, I love Disney, but he had his quote of keep moving forward is like, I ain't gonna say I live by it, but it I, I refer back to it a lot because that is what it's all about. You got to keep moving forward. You don't want to stop. You don't want to stand still. You don't want to halt yourself. You want to keep moving forward because progress is on the other side. Success is on the other side. Greatness is on the other side. You know, we're already great as we are, but we can be greater if we just keep moving forward. <sighs> y'all, y'all just y'all have no idea the feeling that I have right now, I haven't gotten this document back and this, and the person didn't say it's terrible because I'm always like, ex won't, won't the best, but prepare for the worst. You know what I mean? I'm so, 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 so happy that they said, you know, that I'm so glad they just didn't say my story was terrible. I'm so happy about that. And now I feel like, okay, I can continue illustrating. I've been illustrating throughout the process I've tried to set little dates for myself as far as, you know, like illustrate this many pages a day, this many pages a day, so on and so forth. Um, I took the whole month. I might have said this in another video. I took the whole month of July off from illustrating from other people so I could just focus on myself. And um, I'm so glad I did. And like I'm tempted to take another month off to really focus on myself, but we'll see uh, how that happens. But I, I want to tell y'all the name of the book. I do, but I just know you don't speak about something until it's time. You just don't speak about it until it's time. I'm so looking forward to hanging another poster up on this wall for my third book, which is a story about the tooth fairy. What I can tell you, though, is the main character's name is Andrew. I can tell you that much because that's my middle name. 
So um, most of the names in the book of the characters all have some kind of significance. But the main character's name is Andrew. And um, he meets the Tooth Fairy in an unexpected way. And he is faced with a dilemma that he is going to need some help to get over. I can, that's all I can tell y'all about it for now. But I'm just so excited to soon be able to reveal the cover, the the official, uh, not due date. It's a day, my baby, my, my baby, my, the official due date, the official publication date for the book. And I hope that y'all will support it. I hope that y'all will share, um, tell other people and all of that kind of stuff. Speaking of support, I just thought about this. Um, of course, Married at First Sight comes on tonight, so I'll be seeing y'all tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, August 15th, I believe. Um, last, August 12th. <laughs> um, most of y'all who have followed me know that I am a teacher. And usually every year I have a what's called a Donors Choose project. And, um, and I have those because public schools, they funding is finicky. And being an art teacher, I always want to pour into children what I receive as well as, you know, get them to tap into something that they might not know is there. And I'm always just trying to do different projects with them. So I have a another Donors Choose Up. Um, it's going to be specifically for my fourth and my fifth graders because I want them to be able to experience what it's like to paint on a canvas, you know, to paint on a canvas, a big canvas, 16 by 20, and be able to take that home and to hang it up. So I have a Donors Choose for canvases is just canvases so that every fourth and fifth grader at my school can get a canvas that we can paint on and then we're going to hang them up around the school so i'll put that link down in the description and the reason why i said that is because tomorrow august 12th they're doing 50 percent matches on the website so that means for example like if you were to donate fifty dollars they're going to add 25 to it so whatever you donate they're going to add 50 percent of that so if you give a dollar they're going to add 50 cent onto that and every penny will help us to get these canvases but i want to tell y'all today so that y'all could um try to support if you can tomorrow and if you can't i totally understand and if you can't if you can send it to somebody or just share it somewhere that would be really great as well i'd appreciate that but i really hope that the things that y'all have seen me working on over the years, um, the goals y'all have seen me accomplish, I hope that it is inspiration for for y'all to just do it. You know, like Nike, just do it. You know, I mean, we all have so many ideas and we complain about seeing the same type of movies, seeing the same type of TV shows, seeing, you know, this, 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 and this. And we have to literally, look at me pulling out all these quotes. Be the change that you want to see, Gandhi. Be the change that you want to see. Gandhi did say that, right? I hope that was Gandhi. But we have to be the ones to, to, to do that. And the only way we can do it is if we get up and make moves. We, we can't wait on other people to hand us anything. We have everything we would need to 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 achieve our dreams, I believe inside of us. I, I really, really believe that. And um I just I'm so appreciative for all the scatterbrains who support me in all of my dreams. And if there was a way for me to, you know, do the same, I would. I mean if you have something that you want me to tell the other scatterbrains about Send me a DM, I guess, because if you post in the comments, I might miss it. But you can send me a DM on Instagram, Travis A. Thompson. That's my name, at Travis A. Thompson. Send me a DM, and I'll be glad to tell the other scatterbrains about, you know, stuff you have coming up, as long as it don't get too overwhelming, I guess. But um, thank y'all. Thank y'all so much for the support. I cannot wait for y'all. Oh, I can't wait for y'all to find out about this book and find out about this other thing that I'm working on. But in the meantime, if you could support the donor shoes, that would mean a lot as well. Let me get back in here so I can get back to illustrating. Um, and I will see y'all like within 24 hours. Okay. All right. Y'all scatterbrains. Y'all take it easy. And I will see y'all soon. Peace.